guys, um, Andy Guzman, um, the Somer, your Somer rep, um, here talking to you about the selling points um, that my opener features versus the competition that, that's out there. Um, I'm going to go really quick through this PowerPoint because I, uh, I do want to answer questions um, from Michael, Valerie, and, and Albert if he has any. Um, so just to begin with, Somer has been in the industry for more than for 40 years. This year uh, was actually this week I was supposed to be at a party, um, our 40 year anniversary party um, that was going to be held this Saturday. Um, so we have been in the industry for a while. And if you look at the PowerPoint, um, we are in more than 90 countries. I myself have developed the market since I got hired in 2016 from Mexico, Colombia, Puerto Rico, and I'm talking to somebody in Central America. So our brand is international. Um, here in the States, we started about eight years ago, but here in the States, LiftMaster does have a stronghold and it's respectable. I mean, they were the first ones in the industry and they have a really good product. So, so it's, 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 it's fine. But for your customers and for multi-sales, um, it is important for them to know and you guys to know that we didn't pop up yesterday. Um, Somer has existed for more, or like I say, for 40 years, and we plan in staying in business, and it is privately owned. It's not owned by a corporation, example, ASA, Bloy, or anything like that. So moving on, um, going into the opener, if you can see, it's a very compact design and a very compact packaging. Um, everything does come inside the box. Standard eight-foot rail. It is sectional but there's no screws or, or anything that needs to be tightened up to put our rail system together. Everything just pretty much slides in. Um, for shipping purposes and for stocking purposes, it's, 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 very, it's very manageable and you don't have to keep a lot. Um, and we only have two models here currently in the States. One is called the Evo, which you guys talk, and the other one's called the Pro. And in the, in the, in the presentation, you'll see the difference between one and the other but the box is basically the same. They both openers carry the same box. Um, our main difference from everybody else in the street is that we do have, the motor is in the carriage. So we only have one moving part, which is a steel sprocket. Our chain is stationary, it does not move. So this makes our system very efficient and very quiet. So when Somer says that we have a three quarter HP or 600 Newton opener, it's exactly what it is. Um, we don't, we don't uh, butter or, or kind of biggle with the, with the numbers. That's, it is exactly what, what it is. Our 600, our 600 Newton can do up to 600, 700 pounds, which is a three quarter. The one horsepower can do 800, 900 pounds. And our one and a quarter, which is the 2110, that one, I mean, I've installed doors, like I just mentioned that, once 1,100 pounds. Um, and the opener handles the door uh, very, very easily. I mean, customers are very impressed. And man, Michael just mentioned the customers that have installed the opener have been very uh, happy with, with the operation and the ease of installation. Um, another key feature is our warranty. We carry a six year warranty in parts. That's including circuit boards and a lifetime warranty on the motor. And our warranty process is fairly quick. And I think it's one of the best ones in the industry because if one of your customers install one of our openers and a board goes bad, they get the whole carriage, including the motor. So in the warranty carriage, um, you guys have some in stock. If you open one up, you'll see a carriage and you'll see the small board that goes in the back of the unit. So both those things are switched. And what your customer uh, gives the homeowner is basically a brand new opener because they're basically getting a new motor with a new board. And our warranty process is pretty quick. Uh, the questions that we ask are fairly simple and fairly quick to answer. And once we determine that it is the board, uh, in this case, I would, I would refer them to multi-sales. Multi-sales does have advanced warranty parts to service the customer. So they can go in with a defective part and go out with a part that 
uh, they can repair it and have make their, their customer happy. In programming, it's very simple. Um, it's, it's, it's a self-learning process. Um, we only have one limit. It's a physical limit, which is for the open. And during the closed limit, the force, when it hits the floor, the force values of it, the opener registers it, and that's where it stops. Um, one key thing that I do want to mention, especially because in this, in, in this market, a lot of installers do install the conventional opener, and a lot of manufacturers recommend that they install the J-arm and straight arm almost at a 90 degree. With us, a 90 degree, you'll have some issues. Because at a 90 degree angle, if you install our opener with a J-arm and straight arm, the opener is going to hit that 90 degree. It's going to hit, the door is going to hit the floor. But the opener doing programming is going to think that, it's, that it hit like a, like a hard part during the door. And it's going to pass it. And the opener is going to keep on going. And I've seen some bent J-arms and straight arms. The opener doesn't break. It's just the straight arm and J-arm that do bend. So it's highly recommended that when you do sell this to not to an installer that has never installed our opener, to recommend that they install the J arm and straight arm at a 45 or like 60 or like a 60 degree angle. Um, the safety we have an advanced object force and detection system, which is um, this carries over from the European system. Um, U.S., the U.S. market and, well, the Americas is where the safety devices are needed. Any other place in the world, they, uh, they don't have safety devices. It's a different way that they do it. So our opener, if there's something on the way that's above where the safety eyes are, it'll hit it. It will sense that it hits something, and then it'll reverse back. Um, it does have an automatic locking mechanism, for, especially for those lead head, uh, low headroom doors where sometimes when you install a belt or a chain operator, after when it stops, they tend to coast. Probably not that at the beginning, but after a while, the belt and the chain stretch. So the, once the op opener is open, once the, once the door is open, that, that bottom section tends to close, uh, tends to coast a little bit. With our opener, exactly where you want the door to stop, that's where it's gonna stop. Um, another, another strong feature is our radio system, Psalm Lock 2. Um, feedback from customers have told me that our system in range is better than the security 2.0. Um, I've tested it out. Uh, I, I helped an installation at the beginning in San Diego when the openers were, were coming out and I was close to two blocks away and I was still uh, opening and closing the garage door. So we have a long range because our frequency is 922. And it's also secure because it's 128-bit encrypted. It's a rolling code, so it's very hard for companies or a company to clone our system. Um, our emergency release can be unlocked and locked in any position of the door. The opener recognizes, especially if there's a power outage, the opener recognizes that there was a power outage. And the first thing the opener will do is the LEDs will flash, and it's going to move towards the open position not towards the closed position. So it, will, it always wants to know where it's at, the opener, because it does have a memory. And if, and if it doesn't recognize the position it was at, it'll move towards the back, so that way it knows where it's gonna have to start. Um, right here, I do say we have an optional battery, back, uh, battery backup system. For California, it's standard. We have a small ba battery pack that, for emergencies, depending on the weight of the door, um, you can get, up to six or eight openings. If it's a really heavy door, you're probably just going to get one because it is a 24 uh, BDC uh, battery pack. And the power that, uh, let's, for example, an 1100 pound door needs to open is a lot more than a 600 pound door. So depending on the weight of the door, that's how much times it's going to open and close. We are improving our battery and hope we were in the process before COVID of uh, getting something sooner than later but I expect that we're gonna have another battery pack um, by the end of the year. Um, so moving on, um, right here, we describe uh, the, the, our model numbers, which is a 2060 Evo, 2080 Evo, 2110 Evo, 
600 Newton, 800 Newton, 1100 Newton. Standard door height, our rail, like I mentioned, does some standard eight foot rail. Our three quarter opener is probably one of the fastest out on the market, which is 9.4 inches per second. Um, all our openers are homely compatible and we do have an app. Our app is sold as an accessory. And the difference between our app and the competition is our app can do up to 10 doors. So one, one SOMWEB can handle up to 10 doors. Um, you get up to 10 free users. You get an access control system with it. Um, so people can control when, when a user that they permit can open and close the door. For example, the pool guy, they can give them the app and the pool guy can, is, can only have access to the door on Tuesdays between nine and 10, and that's the only day. And the husband can have access 24 hours, seven, seven. So that's, that's something that our app has that another app that uh, the competition doesn't have. And one key feature is we do not store anything in a server. All the information that the homeowner needs and places is embedded inside their SOMWeb. There's nothing stored in the cloud. There's nothing stored in the server. So there's no, there's no worries that our, that our system is going to be hacked um, like the competition has had in the last couple of years. Um, you, cut, you can cut down a rail, uh, especially for those tight, compact uh, areas. And it's pretty much uh, you cut the rail, and whatever you cut a rail, that's what you cut a chain. So we have a really modular system. These are all the accessories that can be installed with our opener. The lock, as you can see, adds 660 more pounds of locking force. I highly recommend the lock, especially with heavy doors. Um, people tend to open, especially in the summer, tend to open their door halfway. Um, with the lock, they can open that 11, 1100 pound door halfway. The lock will guarantee that the door is not gonna move anywhere until somebody activates it via remote or wall station. The Senfil doesn't have much of a use here in California. I do have a customer in Utah that uses it. Um, it records humidity and temperature. So when it snows and your car is snowed in, you bring it inside the garage, the snow starts to melt, creates humidity, and there's a level that the sensor reads and it'll open up just a little bit of the door so that fresh air can come in and the hot air could, could go out. Uh, another accessory is the memo. Uh, as it is, our opener can do up to 40 remote controls, or you can increase it by adding our accessory, which is the memo to 450 remote controls. Um, I have, uh, there's some people that use it for commercial purposes. I've seen people use it in small apartment complexes uh, where they have a uh, uh, door with American hardware and they put the memo and they increase the memory of the, the remote controls. Another key feature about the memo is if anything does happen to the board of the current open install, they can just remove the memo, install a new board, place the memo and all the memory and all the remote controls are still stored. So there's no need to collect remotes and then reprogram it. Second feature is the Lumi. That's an added LED accessory that goes in the back of the control unit. Our motor, our carriage has six LEDs already in it, but some people want the, the light in the back or they just want it for looks. Um, the Accu is the battery, that's the battery pack. Very small and compact and fits inside the control unit. So it's a very clean installation. The buzzer, it has two functions. As you can see, it recognizes the break-in and it's also needed to activate it, the remote activation, which is with the, SOM, uh, with the SOMWeb. And it does come with, as a kit. The SOMWeb is sold with the buzzer and it only comes with one. So if you have a, uh, an installer that is that is gonna have two garage uh, openers installed, you can you you would sell them one SOMWeb that would come with the buzzer and you would you would need to sell them an extra buzzer for that second uh, garage opener. Without the buzzer, the opener won't activate remotely. Um, we have a motion sensor that goes attached to the carriage. Our remote control standard is four button. Uh, 922 frequency, as you can see, um, keychain, or there is a clip for visor. 
Uh, we do have a two button remote for, uh, for people that don't want the four button. The holder comes in handy because uh, it's, it's a holder that place, you can place the remote control inside. Um, some, some people use it, use the holder in combination with the Pearl a remote control as a wireless wall button. Um, or people I put the little holder inside the car so that way they can slide the remote control in and out as needed. Um, the sum touch, that's our wireless wall station. Uh, we have our keypad, the telecody, which is the one that multi sales carry. The, our telecody does up to 10 openers. And because of the range that we have, uh, we can do those 10 openers that, that, that we actually advertise. Um, we do have an external radio receiver, uh, which is called the SOMCOM 2. And so this is for if they have a garage opener of our brand and they have a gate operator, uh, they can install this external receiver and that way they can just use one remote control, which is ours. Um, another feature I did not mention about our radio system is we do have a hop feature, which means um, when you send the signal, when you press the remote control, it sends the signal. It's going to reach, uh, in this case, the SOMCOM 2, which is at the gate uh, opener. And it's going to recognize that the button that you pressed is for the garage opener. And it's going to repeat that signal to the garage opener. So that increases our distance. That hot feature increases our distance. Um, we have a relay in case somebody wants to activate external lighting. Uh, our second keypad is called the interpin. But that, it's covered, but this keypad only does one door. It does not do multiple doors. And then, as mentioned, we have uh, the SOMWeb. Uh, right here, basically describes everything that comes inside of the box of the opener. Safety eyes, remote controls, um, rail, and the carriage is already installed in the rail. Right here, it kind of shows you how it goes together. Um, in the beginning, you might have dealers taking a little bit while, six, six, ten minutes. Once they get the hang of it, I have installers that put it together in three minutes. It's, it's really quick. Everything is pretty much slide in, you put it in. Uh, our control unit slides into the back of the rail. You, the little twist and turn of the chain locks it in place. And you just at the other end, which is at the header, and um, there is a chain tensioner that you tension with a half inch or three eight socket, depending which model you have. And that pretty much assembles the opener. It's, it's pretty quick and I've attached the YouTube video uh, on, the power, on the PowerPoint presentation so you can take a look at it. And that's also a YouTube video that I would recommend dealers to look at. It shows how the opener, the YouTube video shows how the opener is assembled and how it's programmed too. And that's pretty much my, uh, my opener. Um, pretty simple. Um, the only difference between one, one opener and the other is the capacity. The looks are exactly the same. Um, I thought I had the pro model on this one, on this PowerPoint. I don't have it, but the pro model comes with a detachable, uh, control unit. Um, and it comes with an integrated wall station. So you would put this control unit in place, in the place where you put the wall station and there's a wire that it comes with that goes connected to the back of the rail, which powers the opener. Um, a lot of people use this for swing door operators or when they, uh, when they side mount the opener or when there's really no room in the back and they have to use all the space for the rail to get as much travel on the carriage and they place, that, uh, uh, they place it remotely on the wall. Um, that's pretty much it. I, hopefully I covered everything in the time allowed it. Um, do you guys have any questions? For Andy, me? yeah, thank you so much for, for that presentation. Um, I'm sure, you know, Mike or Valerie has some questions lined up for you. Uh, Mike, do you want to just start us off? I think Michael's. No, I'm, I'm good. I mean, you pretty much went over everything. And, you know, like I said, I mean, people are loving it. You know, the people that have installed it love it. And the versatility of it is totally awesome. So I got no questions, man. I appreciate right. your time. Cool. Valerie, did you have anything? 
So I can't recall um, if it was recommended for this unit to do one piece doors or if it's not recommended to do one piece doors because we still have a lot of customers that are still looking for that that dual uh, nice. gear. But our, uh, our opener is highly recommended. Um, for one thing, our difference, the difference between the installation, just in the installation portion between my opener and the competition is usually on one piece doors, they put the opener at an angle. Um, with mm -hmm. ours, it, it just goes straight. It's, it's pretty much straight. Um, we do recommend that you extend uh, the point of connection between the, the one piece door, the door and the carriage. Uh, so what people do is they, they connect the J-arm to the carriage and then they use a straight mm -hmm. arm to extend it and then attach it to the top of the door. Um, but uh, the people that I, uh, for one piece stores, it works, it works really good because the way our system is designed, um, the difference between a one piece store installation of a conventional opener and ours is, is this, our opener, because the motor is at the carriage, does mm -hmm. control the action of the door. So even if the door is really, really not, it's really bad balanced, and it wants to launch at, at the bottom, say it's really hot, the carriage is right. going to control that, and it's going to make for a really smooth operation. Versus a conventional right. uh, operator, if it's really hot, you're going to get the door to launch, and you're going to get the rattling and between the, the, the rail. And everything Which you like get that. on a one piece anyway, because the one piece is bouncy on its own. Yeah. when it goes up or down it's that's why i ask and i didn't know if it was recommended or not but if you can confidently tell these guys that you know because they're always still looking for that that motor for a one piece you know then oh, we yeah. can go ahead and tell them I mean, that summer's going to be see their the, go-to the operator there's a big difference on okay. the, just on the operation on the operation how in conjunction the door and the opener work it's it's a mm -hmm. lot smoother way smoother and then my other question is, um, since I know that the rails come uh, eight foot standard, mm -hmm. for for myself, where would they be cutting the rail? Because I know it it shows the image of them a slide again and click. So are they cutting it on a side that doesn't have the the points that are going to sit into each other to click? Okay, so my experience with dealers that are, that are installing my opener, one, uh, if they have the room on a seven high door, they do not cut the rail at all they just leave it as it okay. is um, and then the, the limits will set themselves yeah yeah precisely okay um, because our control unit at the back is so compact um, homeowners really don't realize that they're getting an eight-foot rail um, so really uh, mm -hmm. I, I still would say 99 well 95 percent of the time on a seven foot door mm -hmm. that eight foot rail is going to work um, if you do need to cut it there's really no end any any end that you want to cut either either the side with control unit goals or at the header, you can cut. It, 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 really, makes, it really makes no difference. Okay. And then the, um, if you can flip that, that head uh, right side up or upside down. The, are you talking about the carriage or are you talking about the control yes, unit? Yes, the, the carriage itself, the whole unit, because I know the whole unit slides. Yes. Um, so then yes. it can be put up, uh, you know, to save space. Let's, let's say that they have a soffit and so they can flip it the other way. Uh, okay. Um, I'm trying to picture it. Can you kind of explain a little bit more? What, what you're, uh, when you, when you, like, when you let's mean say they have, mm -hmm, like put the rail upside down. And so that the, the, the carriage will be underneath versus on top. I wouldn't, uh, we have an attachment. I mean, if, if they're really tight, we have, if they're really tight mm -hmm. in space, they can leave the carriage the, on like a standard installation and there's an attachment mm -hmm. that we sell that attaches to the back of the carriage. So in those really tight situations, uh, if, you if you buy, if the dealer or installer buys this attachment that goes in the back of the carriage, they gain the eight inches of the carriage. Okay. So okay. we can And that's on the accessories. Yeah. Um, okay. If, uh, I didn't show it here, but I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. And that is an okay, accessory. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. So, that'd and, be great. so you can side mount it also, uh, especially right now mm -hmm. that uh, there's an issue with 8500s. Um, I've, I really had, this morning I had two calls of guys, uh, dealers installing my opener on the side. 
so you can install it with the we have a side mount kit which uh, i think you do have pictures oh of yeah it. i've seen that yeah yeah so we do have a side mount kit which our opener can be mounted on on its side either above or under the horizontal and they also need the extension cable with the kit comes with right um, I believe it's they, an extension have, cable. Yeah, no, if they have the room to uh, put the control unit in the back, they don't need that extension cable. If it's a okay. really tight installation, then um, that's what I would sell the Pro because the Pro comes with the extension cable already and uh, hmm. it takes the place of the, of the wall station. And I'll, e I, I'll email you um, the picture of, of, of the Pro. Um, nice, okay. But it's, yeah, our opener is very, very versatile. Very versatile, and mm -hmm. I mean the niche market that we have is is the heavy door, and also recommendation mm -hmm. before I forget, when you sell a heavy door, sell them an extra ceiling bracket, that extra and that ceiling that extra ceiling bracket you want it installed towards the header, because on the heavy door that initial uh, opening does flex the rail, nothing happens to the rail. Mm -hmm. It's more security for homeowners because when they see the rail flex, they get kind of worried. It's just, oh, it's just pretty much, yeah, it just pretty much adds, adds more rigidness and strength to the rail. So on heavy okay. doors, just uh, I, would, I would recommend selling an extra ceiling bracket. I think that's all I had. All right, Andy. Well, we appreciate your time. Um, and, you know, if we have any other questions, we'll definitely reach out to you. So thank you for for sharing us your product and, and your company and uh, um, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Thank you.